back with you. Uh, a couple days ago I posted a video of a ping pong gun that shoots supersonically. Got a lot of hits and a lot of people were asking for high speed video. Well, thanks to John Hewn at Motion Engineering I've got some very high speed, high quality video of what was going on. I'm going to start with a clip of a ping pong ball hitting a heavy steel block, a massive rigid object essentially and it's being recorded at 75,000 frames a second. So if you want a comparison, the video camera I'm using here, and most video cameras, record at 30 frames a second. To go, so to go from 30 frames a second to 75,000 is a, a, a huge increase and very, very significantly slows the motion down. So here you go. Pretty cool, huh? Well, there's a couple things interesting in that little clip. The first of them is that there's a piece of clear plastic tape coming along with the ball, and you can see it hitting as well. That's the tape that was sealing the muzzle of the barrel so we could pull a vacuum on the barrel. The other thing that I thought was interesting is if you look at the ball, most of it shatters. The, ball, the plastic that ping pong balls are made out of is fairly brittle stuff, but the front half of the ball, or most of the front half, deforms plastically and stays that way. It looks like that might be because of instantaneous heating. Uh, as the ball hits the block, something's got to give, and that energy's got to go somewhere. Some of it comes off as heat. All right, another clip I'd like to show you is the ball hitting a piece of steel sheet, and the steel sheet is somewhere in the neighborhood of 45 thousandths of an inch thick. So heavy, but not real heavy. It's the kind of steel you might make cabinets and things out of. And this is being recorded at 30,000 frames a second. Also pretty cool. Again, you can see that piece of tape coming along with the ball and hitting the plate. When the ball hits the plate, you can also see bending waves propagating out from the point of impact. What's a little less obvious is that there's big plastic deformation in that plate, and we found that the impact point uh, got hot. The, the final dent in the plate is uh, circular, about the size of the ping pong ball, as you might guess, but it had a flat bottom on it. You'll be able to see that a little later. Also, you can see the front half of the ball plastically deforming, again, maybe due to the heat. Everybody's want, been wanting to see uh, shots of the ping pong ball going through a ping pong paddle. Uh, the first one I've got, the ball didn't quite go through the paddle. Not because there was anything wrong with the ball or the device projecting the ball. It's because Dr. French here didn't tighten the clamp down hard enough. And although you can't see it in this video, the ball hits the paddle, uh, burrows into the paddle, delaminates it, doesn't quite go through it, but the vise we had the paddle in was knocked off the table onto the floor. All right, well, everybody wants to know, there's what the, the paddle looks like after the impact, and the ball is embedded in the paddle, or what's left of the ball. If you want to know what the back side of it looks like, blown out the back of it. So this, this is a one-use ping-pong paddle. Okay, after that, not really misfire, but not really the satisfying result we were looking for, got another paddle, and this time it worked very well. We clamped uh, the vise down much tighter. The ball went cleanly through the paddle, and if you watch the clip, also you'll see that the paddle broke, so the ball goes through, the ball's gone, and uh, it takes, in the slow motion time, a little while to realize that the paddle is cracked off at the handle and flies off. Uh, we actually found it on the floor several feet from the impact point.
<laughs> okay, if you want to see a little bit more about what's actually happening when the ball leaves the barrel, we've got a real nice clip of the ball leaving the barrel. We're looking at it from the side. It wasn't actually shooting at anything. The ball just hit a, a stop. We were using a box full of uh, styrofoam to capture the ball. But what you can see is the ball leaving the barrel, and you can see how the uh, uh, plastic tape sealing the muzzle actually deforms out, blows out, and actually is, is uh, leaving the barrel, being pulled away from the barrel right as the ball gets there. That's because a little puff of air gets ahead of the ball while it's in the barrel. The ball is not a tight fit in the barrel, and it's important for that little bit of air to get past it. The scale you see in the background was a piece of plywood that uh, Jimmy and Craig lasered a nice scale into. Those are quarter inch lines and the, the, vertic the big vertical lines are an inch apart. Now as we pump down the barrel to draw a vacuum on it, there's a really interesting behavior of the ball. The ball starts to roll towards the uh, uh, vacuum outlet, but as it, when it gets there, it starts oscillating. This appears to be unsteady airflow combined with rigid body motion of the ball. Basically what's going is air is going around one side of the ball to get to the barrel, pulls the ball to one side, then the air goes around the other side. So it starts going back and forth and back and forth. It does this for a little while. When it finally stops, it, we, that appears to be because there's just no air left in the barrel. There's not enough aerodynamic force to make the ball move anymore. We're actually using that as an indicator that we've pulled the barrel down to essentially a full vacuum. Okay, the ball's slowing down, so we're coming up on a, a good vacuum. All right. I guess the last thing I wanted to show you about how the thing operates is that it recoils. There's, you're, you're shooting a projectile out the front. Now, it's really light. It's two and a half grams. It's just a ping pong ball. But it doesn't weigh nothing, and also the air in the barrel weighs something, a cubic meter of air has a mass of about one and a quarter uh, kilograms. So that uh, you know, a, a piece of air, a cube of air this big, has a very noticeable weight, well, the, the or mass. Well, the mass of the air that's inside the barrel is also not necessarily negligible when you're accelerating it this fast. So if you're pushing something down the barrel, you know, F equals MA, there, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. So as the ball goes down the, the barrel, the whole device recoils a little bit, it slides on the table, and this is what it looks like. Oh yeah. Alright, firing three, two, one. <laughs> Alright, I see no reason not to end this video with something pretty dramatic. Borders on a mass of stupidity. So, took a ball, and filled it with water using a little syringe and then sealed the hole. This was Jimmy and Craig's idea. And the ball did work. It did leave the barrel as, as it would if it was a, just a typical ping pong ball, unweighted ping pong ball. Velocity was a lot slower, but the mass of the ball is a lot heavier, a lot heavier because of the water. And the dynamics of impact are a lot different because now the uh, mechanical impedance, if you want to call it that, of the ball is much, much, much higher. So. Here's the ball hitting that same steel sheet we hit the ball with before. Now, if you look at the, the beginning of the clip, you can see these two round dents uh, up above the impact point. They look almost like eyeballs. That, those are where the, uh, the ball had hit before. And uh, you can see that it's a flat bottom dent on, in both cases. When the ping pong ball filled with water hits the plate, it's a completely different uh, interaction. So here you go. Wow, wadded up like tinfoil. I hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you next time.